guys, happy Wednesday and welcome to Work It Wednesday. My name is Richard Ganai and this is RJ Avenue. I hope that you're all having a beautiful week. We're halfway there and that you're being inspired by the change in the season, by the change um, in the world. Things are starting to open up. I hope you're feeling a little bit more safe. Um, and again, today is the opportunity for us to jump in and work a little bit of mixed media into our Wednesday projects. So let's go ahead and switch over to that top view. We are going to work with a few different sets. I haven't decided really what I'm working with here. I've got layered scallops. I've got handwritten. I've got lined up one of these. Um, and I'm also going to use lovebirds. I did use lovebirds not that long ago, but... I think it's going to be the perfect background for my project today. So here with me in the studio, I've got David helping me out. Hi guys. Thanks, David. Um, and we're going to start with a sweet lavender card base. So I'm going to cut that guy up. And I'm going to bring in a layer of my favorite sour mist. Um, and then we'll have some uh, cottage sugar that we're gonna add to the mix a little bit later. But let's go ahead and score our card base. Linda Gorman, Lori Hellick, Carmen, Linda Hicks, Bernice Taylor, Andrea Mills, and Adam are all in here saying hello. Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. For those of you who were part of my card club earlier, Today is Card Club Wednesday, which is the second Wednesday of every month. And so we just met for our Card Club class, which was amazing. We created four beautiful cards. These, since they're right at my reach, were our cards from earlier today. We had a blast. I had a blast. Uh, and we loved them. So these are the projects that we just created for May's Card Club which is still available, of course. Um, and I've got a layer here of watercolor paper. And the reason why I'm using watercolor paper is because we are going to get a little mixed media-ish. And I want to create a little bit of a background here. So I need a workable sheet. I'm going to grab the backing to my Lovebird stamp set. Uh, and I'm going to grab some mixed media mixer. I always seem to not close it right. And I'm always stuck. So we are just gonna grab a little bit of media mixer here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in some tangy gum. I'm going to create a background and I'm going to use my fingers, which is probably not the wisest thing to do, Richard, because your hands are well. All right, so I'm just going to bring in a brush then just to pretend like I'm doing the right thing. So I'm just going to bring in and it's got pretty uh, a pretty amount of water on here, so which is great. I'm also going to bring in some media mixer here. Oop, that was a lot. To bring in a little bit of tangy grape. Just a teeny tiny drop of that is going to be the perfect color. Getting there. There we go. Just a little teeny tiny drop. Um, and I'm going to bring that in. Again, let me grab some more of that water because I loved the water fusion in it. So I'm just gonna bring, normally I would just use my fingers for these guys, but- Looks like Sully. Looks like Sully, says David, who is about to be 21, but clearly is still a baby. I'm gonna bring in some of this guy here. I just want a really cool background, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and let that dry for the most part on its own, um, I may have to come back in and work with it. 
I'm gonna go ahead and clear, well, you know what, not yet. I'm gonna come into, I have a different piece of watercolor paper and I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on this. I'm gonna bring in some media mixer onto the water background. And it's almost gonna serve like a gesso, just a little bit of media mixer here, a little bit more I meant. <laughs> with the water. Now I'm going to bring in a few drops of our sour mist. And let me bring in some dazzling pat sour mist to the mix. I'm going to I want it to be a little sparkly. I want it to be a little bit shiny. And we're just going to go ahead and create a lighter blue, bring in some of that purple. Just enough, super light, not too heavy. Helen Smith and Danny Joe also joined a little later. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. All right, now we can go ahead and wipe these guys off. Today we are playing a little bit with Media Mixer. Uh, and typically on Wednesdays, I've been trying to focus on bringing a mixed media project to life. And so that is what we're working on today. So we're going to let this guy dry. I love it when it dries on its own. I think that it does a much better job than when I help the process. I just love that look. I just love to come back though and take care of the ends a little bit. Um, and I'm actually not done with that project. So this one, however, I'm gonna speed up the process on cause I'm gonna stamp on it. I'm going to go ahead and help this one out a little bit. Just so it straightens out for me. Super cool backgrounds already, right? I love the use of the media mixer. It really helps me move color. Yeah, it's definitely, and so it gets a little warped because of the because of the water, but don't mind it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hand draw. Why are you scared, David? Look away. We're gonna hand draw just some basic shapes here. I'm looking for a little bit of a house that I want to build here, okay? So, and I'm just using one of this graphite paper, I mean, uh, marker, pencil. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut both of these guys out. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my scallop layers. You can also use a sharpie if you want to use a sharpie. I love the the mix of the color, the crayon on it. We're gonna go ahead and stamp our pieces here. So 
So super basic shapes, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that to the background because we're gonna come back in and stamp this using some black taffy. Probably ink it up a couple of different times, but I love that look. So we've got that one down. Just cleaning up my stamp. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab these layered up pieces for my birdhouse here. So we're, we're creating a little birdhouse, clearly. Now you can choose to add color to it. I love the, the brightness of, so for example, we're gonna go ahead and ink this up in tangy gum. And then we're going to need to stamp a little bit more here in a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and cut this guy out. So we've got our little birdhouse here, so cute. And we're gonna punch out the center. Because I love the layered look. So I'm just gonna start here. And I'm gonna work my scissors through it. Just something fun we're playing with here. I loved the scallops on my rooftop. Uh, and I'm gonna come in and just add a little bit of color to them. Denise Taylor says, are the inks fade proof? So our black taffy is fade proof, but all our other inks are a basic dye based, um, which actually allow us to watercolor and have a whole bunch of other techniques. But they're not fade proof in the sense that, of course, if they're next to the sun or things like that, they will tend to fade over time like every other dye based ink. So check it out, we've got a little birdhouse here, super fun. And we've got our piece here that we have our background for. But now we need to create a little bit of a separation. So the best way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come back with first and foremost, some black dye ink, okay? We're gonna oversaturate again. We're going to bring in some pretty heavy drops of black dye. 
and we want that to smear a little bit so we're going to go ahead and just create that smear it's okay if you get some over go ahead and not be afraid of playing with the ink you definitely want to play with the ink without feeling like you're afraid to do that we're going to go ahead and speed up this process and see why I, I prefer it to kind of dry on its own because if not I'm moving color around but of course for the purpose of our video we need to help speed up the process Now we're going to go ahead and saturate again. This time we're going to add some media mixer. Again, to soften up our background. And you can also use a wipe to just go ahead. You're going to soften up that background. Now remember, media mixer is designed to activate our sugar drops. So that's why you're going to have some color merging uh, and that's because media mixer is designed to do exactly that is to pick up some of the color from that background and you have got this cool background that we're now going to be able to play with and create a little bit of a separation we've got now we're going into mixed media mode right we're going to come back in here and we're going to add a little bit of water to our fingers to just kind of blend in that house background. So just kind of rub that crayon in. If you're not using crayon and you're using a Sharpie, don't worry, you can always add um, some of the, this is gonna merge in some of our red. I don't like to add the water direct because I, I have a little bit more control when I'm using my finger. So I'm just rubbing that crayon from the black in, and it just creates a little bit more of a usable piece. And of course, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of medium mixer and so what it's going to want to do, it's going to want to blend in to that color that I had, the original color. I love doing mixed media this way. I feel like I have a lot more fun with it. And I get a better result at the end. So look at my little house. Sorry, apologize for the Band-Aid. And I still see my stamp background. It still has the texture from it. I'm gonna remove some from the center here. Super cool. So I've got these pieces that are a little bit more smoky. Now what they're gonna allow me to do is they're going to allow me for my stamp images to be highlighted. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a scrap piece of paper here. Who's scared? Uh, we're going to close our mixed media bottle. And we're going to stamp the images that we need. And the only ones that I need are going to be the bird nest, which I think is perfect. Uh, I definitely want the bloom. Blooms out of there. Maybe even this guy, I haven't decided if I want to use it. And I don't want the birds, we used them last time. Now we're going to use some of these for the background here. Oh, we also want that little scrap of paper that we had. We're going to use that later to stamp some of our verbiage. that right side. 
So we're going to create, we're going to stamp here. I love merging the two worlds of regular stamping with your mixed media. And I think that is something that I can totally resonate with. I can work with some people are just all mixed media or all clean and um, stamped version. I like to do a little bit of both. I think that it allows us to be creative. It allows us to kick it up a few notches while still giving us what we love, which for me, it's stamping, playing with ink. So let me put these guys back. I have the hearts out here somewhere. I'm gonna move these guys so that I can stamp these sentiments onto the watercolor paper that I've got here. Jamo says, I'm so not set up for the mess of mixed media and I have trouble with the vision to just keep adding textures and layers. Yeah, I know. Some That was the hardest part for me too, Suckerman. I, at first I was like, how come we just got rid of everything we did by adding an additional layer on top? But actually it makes a huge difference um, as you see your final project come alive. And we're going to talk a little bit about that here, but... Close this guy up. Put this guy away. And so we've got these little hearts that I want to kind of place. Looking for one of my rounds. Well, I can't find around, so I'm going to use this guy. Um, and I'm just going to place it. This is our bird nest. It's going to go here. So again, we love the fusion of the mixed media elements. And it's really just a game of layers, as we've discussed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in some color to our nest here. And I'm doing some light strokes and some heavier ones just to create texture. I definitely want to go darker inside the nest to really pop out the eggs. So you just highlight that a little bit more. We wanna play with some of the blues uh, because they'll really help bring color. Bring a saturation of color into your project. And some of this is going to be hidden 
as I layer everything together. But really, it's about losing the fear to it. And playing with the different options that you have. I'm going to bring in some purple to the mix here. Just because we want to highlight the colors that we're already working with. Thanks for joining us too, guys. If you're new to us, on Wednesdays, we typically do mixed media projects, which has been great. I do love to go outside of that space to give me that little glow so that when I cut them out, they are all just perfectly connected. And I'm going to do the same thing to my nest here. So just blending my pencils. All right. Go ahead and cut these guys out. It is exciting to see the project come alive. So we've got our little birdhouse, we've got a little nest egg. Almost done guys, I'm just cutting out all my stamped images so that I can start layering them onto my project. And this is just part of the creative process. I don't pre-create most of my projects, I just kind of create them on the spot. Um, mainly because I love sharing the creative process with everybody.
show so much says, I really love the first mixed media canvas that we did with the mermaid. It's on my wall in my craft room. Oh, that's so cool, Michelle. We did so many different beautiful projects too, but that one was one of the most elaborate ones. It had definitely different types of mediums to it. Um, it was just great to see that piece come alive. All right, so it's now time for us to start layering our various different pieces and just building. We're basically building. We're gonna grab our foam squares and when in doubt, we're gonna start to pop out our various different layers here. Don't be too concerned about your you know layering pieces just have fun as you start to build and build it's really the 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 birdhouse ultimately becomes your background or part of your background it's just adding layers and adding texture i'm going to bring this down just a little bit cuz i don't want the the top to go up too high So we've got our birdhouse laid out. And again, I love the dark elements to this. I think it's very, um, it's kind of like a very big mixed media piece. We're gonna add just a little bit of liquid glue to this piece here. And we're going to pop out our bird nest right behind it, okay? We're definitely going to bring that. We want some of that greenery to show, so we're going to pop that up a little a bit. We're going to bring this guy over to this other side. We're building and building and building and building. And lastly, we're going to bring in our bigger bloom right in front of our birdhouse. So cool. We love the pieces. They layer beautifully. Now we've got our sentiments. So these guys, we're just going to straight cut. I love how you can paper piece is what I would call it. Now you could either just leave the dear friend on there or you can bring in the you make me happy part. Now if you want them to stand out a little bit more, I left them lighter for that purpose and we want to just smudge that additional ink that it might have just so that it blends in a little bit better dear friend you make me happy so when in doubt pop it out we're gonna pop these guys out just the same so different how huh? when you play with mixed media you have so many different elements we're not even done with this. We're gonna add some splattering. We're gonna add some twine. And of course, it's gonna be layered onto our beautiful bright colors of cardstock. Beautiful. You make me happy, dear friend. And I love how the eggs have no color to them. They really stand out. We're going to add our twine. Before I add my twine, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of black dye with a brush, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit of black dye. I want the inside of my bird cage or that where the birds are 
to be saturated in that black. So fun. You just want to let that sink into your cardstock. Do you see that? Now we're going to come back with some glue. We're going to add our twine to the mix. Make sure you fasten that. Beautiful. We're going to layer it onto our gorgeous piece of sour mist. I'm going to add five different foam square pieces to this because I want one down the center just because it's been treated quite a bit. There's quite a bit of saturation seeping through. And then what's going to come into our card base. Look how beautiful that turned out. I love the reason why I'm adding it to this layer is because we added that black ink and I just wanted to sink into the watercolor paper and just kind of do its thing. I don't want it to drip out of the birdhouse. Perfect. All right. So now that we've got those beautiful layers, we're going to come back with a little bit of white splattering. We want to lighten up the mood. It's not a sad day. It's a beautiful day. Where's my brush? So we're going to bring in some white splattering here. I'm almost supposed to say like galaxy stars. Oh. See? <laughs> you make me nervous, David. Well. All right, yeah, it does look very galaxy-ish. We're gonna come back with some Dazzling Pat in our pre-mixed um, Sour Mist. It just adds a little bit of a mystical element of surprise here and I think it's perfect let me clean off that base and I will zoom in here for you guys to check it out I love working um I love Wednesdays because they let me get really artsy <laughs> sorry it was so far away but if not you couldn't see the whole process um but I love how Dear friend, you make me happy, and it's just a happy place. Um, and I love the dazzling pat elements. Can you see them? Um, and just adding that little bit of white splatter just makes it magical just makes especially when you have such a a dark base uh, adding that little bit uh but look at how important all the layers were right the black the media mixer just lightens it up we've got of course our beautiful tones in sour mist in tangy grape I love that there's quite a bit of texture in the text as well. Uh, and it's just so perfect. I think it's so inviting and it allows us to dream a little, uh, love a little, and share some of that joy 
that we might have. Guys, I hope you enjoy today's work at Wednesday. It's always a pleasure to be able to bring projects to life, to be able to bring paper to life. And um, I love using that phrase, bring paper to life, because we really truly do. We start off with just some plain Jane paper. Um, there's nothing to it. And then we work and work and work and work and work until we create a beautiful piece of art that just, just screaming love and joy and happiness and celebration and whatever occasion project you're creating. Uh, it gives us that power to bring it to life in paper. So thanks again for joining us, guys. Remember to subscribe to our channel uh, as well as share our channel so that we can continue to grow our RG community. Until next time, adios.